Hello everyone so today i am going to teach you about chemical carcinogenesis so the name itself suggests it means a cancer caused by chemical carcinogen so the chemical carcinogen that can cause the cancer can be divided into three type or we can say three group of classification of chemical carcinogen one is direct acting carcinogen which doesn't require metabolic conversion second one is indirect acting carcinogen which is also known by the name pro carcinogen because it require metabolic conversion for causing the cancer and third variety is natural plant and the microbial product now there are now let's see first direct acting chemical carcinogen they are the weak carcinogen and they doesn't require any metabolic conversion to act as a carcinogen right they are direct acting agent they doesn't require metabolic conversion all right now see friends the direct acting chemical carcinogen could be of two type right the examples or we can say examples are of two type alkylating agent and acylating agent first of all let's see the example of alkylating agent okay so the first example of alkylating agent is beta propiolactone right the second example is dimethyl sulfate the third example is you know dipoxybutane the fourth example is anti cancer drug which is a important example of alkylating agent causing cancer right the anti cancer drug include cyclophosphamide chlorambucil and nitrosurea right this anti cancer drug also can cause cancer now let's see the example of acylating agent so the common example is two the one is one acetyl imidazole and second one is dimethyl carbamoyl chloride all right so these all are the example of direct acting chemical carcinogen right now let's see the mechanism of action of this direct acting agent particularly of alkylating agent how they cause the cancer so as we have discussed it doesn't require metabolic conversion right they can directly act now see this substance is electron deficient atom so they doesn't have one electron right in their structure so because of that they can react with electron rich atoms so they can react with dna rna and the protein so this alkylating agent will react with dna rna and protein and they will do the damage of that substance so in that variety normal cell can be damaged right usually the alkylating agent and anti cancer drug you know cause the cancer cell destruction but here the normal cell also destructed because of their electron deficient property all right now let's see the indirect acting agents that is also known by the name pro carcinogen right all right so the pro carcinogen can be divided into two variety polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon or aromatic amines and the azo dye these two are the example of indirect acting chemical carcinogen or pro carcinogen right they require the metabolic conversion for causing the cancer all right let's see the example of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon first so the first example is benzotriazine right the second example is benzopyrene then third example is dibens anthracene right 712 dimethyl benzotriazine then 3 methyl colanthrene so these are the example of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon now let's see the example of aromatic amines or azodynes so the first example is naphthylamine then another one is benzidine then another example is acetyl amine of fluorine right uh, the last example is dimethyl amino azobenzene that is uh, also known by the name butter yellow so all these are example of uh, you know indirect acting pro carcinogens all right now remember friends that uh, you know indirect acting agents pro carcinogen require the metabolic conversion 
टू बिकम द अल्टिमेट कार्सिनोजन राइट विथ मेटाबोलिक कन्वर्जन दे विल कन्वर्टेड इन टू अल्टिमेट कार्सिनोजन एंड धेन दे केन कोज द कैंसर दे डायरेक्टली डजेंट कोज कैंसर राइट नाउ विच आर द सोर्स ऑफ पोलिसाइक्लिक एरोमेटिक हाइड्रोकार्बन्स लेट सी द सोर्स सो द सोर्स कूड बी कोल्टार यू नो फॉसिल फ्यूल्स देन सीगरेट स्मोकिंग यू नो ड्यूरिंग द एनिमल फैट एक्सट्रैक्शन then you know smoke meat or smoke fish all that are source of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon and all these are very important carcinogen remember friends all right now let's see the mechanism of action of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon or indirect acting agents so first of all we will see the mechanism of action of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon how they cause the cancer so as we have discussed you know it's a electron deficient atom so it will get metabolized by the cytochrome p40 dependent oxidase these uh, hydrocarbons will metabolize by cytochrome p40 dependent oxidase so there will be formation of electron deficient electrophilic epoxide right electron deficient reactive electrophile will form electrophilic apex epoxide will form and this electron deficient as atom obviously will react with electron rich substance like that of dna rna and the protein and in this way they will permanently damage the dna they will mutate the dna and so the cancer can form all right now polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon can cause the following type of cancer it can cause skin cancer then it can cause soft tissue cancers right it can lead to lung cancer development and breast cancer also can be developed the most common cancer caused by it is a hepatic angiosarcoma which is a vascular malignant tumor of liver and especially it is caused by polyvinyl chloride all right now let's see something about aromatic amines and azo dye we have seen the example but which are the source so the source could be aniline dye then rubber industries and coloring food you know this all could be the source of aromatic amines and azo dye now which cancer they will produce so they will lead to two type of cancer in the body it can cause bladder cancer or it can cause a liver cancer now let's understand why this two tumor is especially common why azo dye can lead to development of these two type of tumor so for that we have to understand the mechanism of action of it so friends aromatic amines and the azo dye will be metabolized in the liver right they will metabolize in the liver so in the liver they will get converted into active carcinogen that's why they can cause liver cancer right now this active carcinogen can be detoxified in the body you know they can detoxify by the conjugation with glucuronic acid in the liver they will detoxify by conjugation with glucuronic acid in the liver right so after detoxification this conjugated metabolite will get excreted in the urine they will excreted in the urine right but again they will deconjugate in the urinary tract by glucuronidase right they will again deconjugate in urinary tract by glucuronidase enzyme and so ultimately you know we can say that after deconjugation they will again get converted into active carcinogen especially hydroxyl amine and so the urothelium will expose to this carcinogen and that's why they can cause bladder cancer so in this variety in by this mechanism they can cause liver cancer and bladder cancer right urinary tract cancer all right now let's see some of the example of uh, natural plants and the microbial products So the first example is aflatoxin B1, then griseofulvin, then betel nut, then you know uh, 
nitrosamines and amides then vinyl chloride then nickel and the chromium then insecticides then fungicides and then asbestos now first of all let's see something about aflatoxin b1 so the source of aflatoxin is fungus the source is aspergillus flavus it is a mold you know it's a fungus so the source is aspergillus flavus and you know this this particular fungus grow on the improperly stored grains and the peanuts if the storage is not proper if the moisture is there then they can grow they will grow on the improperly stored grains and the peanuts and they can lead to a most commonly hepatocellular carcinoma that is the main danger of aflatoxin right all right now let's see something about the nitrosamine so friends uh, how nitrosamine will form in the body right it is another agent that could, that will cause a cancer so the nitrites usually used in the food preservative right especially they will used as a preservative for the meat and other type of food so whenever they are ingested you know whenever we take this uh, food which contain the preservative it would react with the amines and the amide in the diet right in our diet you know amides uh, with amine and amide they can react and in the gastrointestinal tract bacterial flora will metabolize into metabolize it into a nitrosamine and this nitrosamine can cause gastrointestinal cancer especially they can lead to development of colon carcinoma right all right so in this way nitrosamine can cause cancer all right we have already discussed in our previous videos about the asbestos it can cause the mesothelioma you can check the playlist and see the video of asbestos right all right now let's see the mechanism of action of such uh, natural microbial product so obviously the mechanism is here also the same there will be reactive electrophile epoxide formation and so they will react with electron rich substance that is dna protein and they will damage the dna genetic mutation will be there and so cancer can develop particularly it affect ras and p53 tumor suppressor gene right the mutagenicity of the chemical can be tested by ams test right all right all right now friends i will discuss something about initiation and promotion multi step hypothesis this is the in general hypothesis by which the cancer is developed so we have the direct acting agent and the indirect acting agent chemical carcinogens that can cause cancer right indirect acting agents will need a metabolic conversion and so they will get converted into ultimate carcinogen right so the direct acting agent will act directly while ultimate carcinogen form after the metabolic conversion both will form a reactive electrophiles right they will form the electron deficient intermediate form reactive electrophiles means electron deficient intermediate will form and as we have discussed previously you know this electron deficient atom will react will bind with electron rich agent that is dna rna and the protein and so they can damage the dna they can lead to non lethal permanent dna damage see friends i am discussing about the multi step hypothesis right this is the in general hypothesis for the chemical carcinogen to cause the cancer so because of dna damage you know cancer can form but initially body try to repair the damaged dna or they will remove it by apoptosis but somehow if it is not there then initiation will begin and cancer process will start so that is known by the name initiated cell now what happen friends this initiated cell will get proliferate in the cell cycle right and so ultimately preneoplastic clone will form so there will be formation of preneoplastic clone and along with now secondary genetic mutation you know secondary genetic mutation and the proliferation ultimately there will be malignancy in the body there will be cancer development this all process is known by the name promotion right all right 
सो आई वॉन्ट टू से दैट यू नो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल केमिकल कार्सिनोजन विल इनिशिएट द सेल दैट इज नोन बाय द नेम इनिशिएशन एंड देन प्रमोशन प्रोसेस विल बिगिन सो देर इज अ टू स्टेप अकर्स फॉर द कैंसर डेवलपमेंट एंड वॉन्स द ट्यूमर प्रोसेस स्टार्टेड इट डजेंट रिक्वायर कंटिन्यूअस प्रेजेंस ऑफ कार्सिनोजन राइट वॉन्स द सेल इज इनिशिएटेड they can be promoted to cancer you know so that is all about the chemical carcinogen hope you have enjoyed this video thanks for watching and i will be right back with a new video till then take care and bye bye thank you very much this is the reference for my today's lecture